was only a kid when I left Earth. I had no idea what the universe had in store for me. Our worlds are facing an unstoppable threat. You guys are our last chance. I guess we're stuck together. Partners. Are you telling me the fate of 12 billion people is in the hands of a thief, two thugs, a murderer, and a maniac? For me, when the movie really takes off is, the, is when we, we zoom in on the Xandar Mall and we meet Rocket and Groot together and you see Groot drinking out of the fountain and you see Rocket with, you know, looking through his vid screen for potential bounties and that to me is the moment that like there's this synergy that happens like you take all of the parts the Peter Quill you've met Gamora we you know I don't think at that point we've met Drax yet but you see like somehow the sum is greater than the whole and and it's when Rocket is talking and he sees like the little kid and he's like who's this little guy like look at this little you know it's not cool to need help or, you know and it's like <laughs> it becomes really fun and you just you see that this world, you know, this journey is going to be really good. So I'd say Rocket. I think Rocket probably in that moment steals the show for me. Well, I have my favorite kid. It's Rocket, but I don't know if he necessarily <laughs> steals the show. It's, uh, I, 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 for me, in some ways, I, I think, you know, Groot, I, I just go by the tweets I get. And it's, it, you know, and, and frankly, I get more tweets about Groot and Batista than anybody else. I just got a call from my agent and they were like, are you willing to shave your head for a role in a Marvel film? And I said, absolutely. Um, and then I just auditioned. And I also had an inside in because my friend, Ben, who was essentially reading the role of Drax for all of the other screen tests, is like one of my very best friends. And he's also one of my best friends. Yeah, and we were really, and he was like, He's like, dude, you can't, Pratt, you can't tell anyone, but it's totally yours. The truth is, the songs that were chosen for the movie were chosen to be specific to those scenes. So it isn't so much about what, you know, what songs I like the best as it is about what songs speak to that scene. And all those songs were written into the script, um, except for one. And so they were, you know, all part, they're sort of baked into the story of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is what makes it work so well. So for me to think of a song that I like a lot that I want to put in the movie, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it works. I mean, one of my favorite scenes in the movie was to ELO's Living Thing, which we cut from the film. And it, that was, to me, Living Thing was like the main Guardian song because it was so, ELO seemed like the Guardian's house band almost. <laughs> Wouldn't mind seeing Peter Quill try to seduce somebody to like Lionel Richie? <laughs> yeah, like put it on like he's a Mac. Like like, a Hello, it's me you're looking for, and they're just like, like super serious and play a real like that's how he's been getting with all these Fumelians is just like this one line on the track. Some purple girl, some purple girl, and she's just like crying because it's so beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing she's ever heard. Let me tell you something. When you think of things that are sexy, uh, they're usually in pink or black or white or red, uh, they're not in green. If I had to go back, I would really consider, you know, even though she's green in the comic books, changing her color, because it was so hard. It took us so long to find a green that like worked that guys wouldn't tests. believe. And seeing some of the tests, and it was like, a lighter shade of green, and then she just looked like she was seasick. Yeah. And it was like a darker shade of green. It was like, that looks like someone got painted green. Yeah, That's exactly. That's look what good it was. at all. Green or Martians. Swamp things are green. Boogers are green. It's like, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so we, I was adamant about finding that right shade. I'm guessing, Karen, you had the longest in the makeup. Did I? Did yeah. you? Five hours. Yeah, yeah. You I didn't have to stand up and put my arms out, though. I just watched Pulp Fiction on repeat. It was really fun. <laughs> I'd really uh, become close with my makeup team. Mm. And uh, so uh, the comparison I like to make is, is if you could, you know, imagine yourself just hanging out with five of your friends for four hours and having, you know, some good conversation, a lot of laughs, and listening to good music, it, it kind of flies by. Chris and I were driving somewhere the other day, and we were in the car, and we were one, in one of our ridiculous conversations, and we're talking about all the different things that could happen to the Guardians in this universe, as we do endlessly. Um, you know, you think we're sick of hearing about the Guardians? No, we talk about it constantly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, he, and he was saying, dude, seriously, it... I really, really think that Star-Lord should kill Iron Man. <laughs> like, 
the audience would be, it would be so awesome if he came down and he shot Tony Stark in the face. <laughs> People would be so surprised, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they would. Well, I think it, you know, I think that would be awesome. I know you do. I know. Or like, without giving away any, you know, look, none of my ideas will ever make the movie, so I should just tell you all of them because it would, it will never be a spoiler. Um, but I know that, like in the comic, like Gamora and Iron and Iron Man, you know, they have uh, in through no. the comics they've they've hooked up. And how does Peter Quill feel about that? Maybe he doesn't like it, and then maybe Rocket hears it that I don't like it, and then Rocket shoots Tony Stark. Minute five, just blows a hole in his face. That would be amazing. People would be super mad, but it would be kind of great. That you would be like, "What? How did you do that?" And they're like, "Cause uh, Robert Downey Jr. makes a hundred million dollars a movie, we can't afford to have him." More. <laughs> Pratt's minimum wage. Let's yeah. keep him around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can afford Pratt. He kills everyone. Hello. <laughs> Is it me all looking? <laughs> Credits roll. Seven minutes into the movie, it's over. <laughs> Only worth Dead. it. And then the rest of the movie is like a weekend at Bernie's yeah, type thing with Robert Downey Jr.'s body to keep to make him the most out of his contract. It's skittering across the desert with the Iron Man thrusters on. Themselves the guardians of the galaxy. What a bunch of a holes. I'm